Good morning. Happy Sunday. Gracie's here. Say good morning, Gracie. You're not talking? Okay, cool. Well, first of all, uh, who's been awake since 4 o'clock? Me. Yeah, I know, right? So, I woke up thirsty. Cold medicine thirsty. So, I get up and I go grab this big canteen. Is that what you want to call it? It's like one of those big metal water bottles. And I fill it up with the cold water from the fridge. And I turn it up to drink it. Well, it dribbles all over the front of me. There's nothing like ice cold water dribbling down your shirt at four o'clock in the morning to make you want to really go back to sleep. That was very eye-opening, I'll say that, okay? It was very eye-opening. Then I was like, well, is the something wrong with the ring on the inside of the lid? You know, they have these little rubber rings. This one doesn't. I mean, like, it didn't come with one. So, there's one spot where I turn it up that it dripples out all over me. Yeah. So, that one's going in the donate box. Uh, we'll let someone else have the dribbling water bottle. I don't remember where I've got where where I've got it. I'm so tired I can't talk. Where I got it because it's I've had it a while, but I don't remember it dribbling upon me. But it's got the top that has like a handle you can carry it by, and then like a little canteen type screw top lid. That way you can just pop that off and drink it and then put that back on. So I thought, you know, when it's super hot or whatever, I could just take that with me on our walks. Like that's ever happened. Well, anyway, I, that was far too much thinking at four o'clock in the morning. So anyway, then I go back to bed and I'm trying to go back to sleep. Then Penny wakes up and she comes up and she wants some morning loving, which is fine. So I'm trying, on, trying to cuddle her in so we can go back to sleep. Could we? No. So I went ahead and got up at five. I wrestled until five o'clock trying to go back to sleep and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I was like, okay, I see how you're gonna be. So we'll just get up. So anyway, then I went ahead and ate my breakfast and got my bath and did all the things. It's still dark. It's seven o'clock in the morning and I have the blankets in to wash. I have already bathed and washed my hair and blow dried it and put on makeup. <sighs> Why? Anyway, but I wanted to tell you something. But listen, to the words coming out of my mouth. Because sometimes I feel like people don't hear the words coming out of your mouth. They hear what you want to hear. Okay, so somebody in the comments and I, you know what, hold on. Let me go, let me go get the name since I'm not out walking and I can take the time to do this. Hold on. Okay, so it was Cindy. Cindy commented this and it brought a memory to me about my mother. Okay, so... Cindy's son has essential tremors. My mother and her mother had essential tremors. So what that means is uh, there's a part of your body that just shakes. For my mom, it was her mouth. My grandmother, it was just her head. Her head just kind of bobbled, okay? They told my mom if she wanted to get it to calm down, that she could take a little shot of whiskey. And it worked. Yeah, it worked. It would, especially her mouth. She never really shook a lot in her hands. But sometimes when it got real bad, she said she felt like her whole body was just kind of shaking, but you couldn't see it. Then she would have what is called a burst, an essential tremor burst, where your hand just kind of jerks up like this, right? Well, my mother, she didn't laugh about, this is what I'm saying, pay close attention to what I'm saying. And Cindy's son does the same thing, or is that's how she described it. They're not laughing at the disease. They're not laughing at the fact that they suffer with essential tremors, but they're laughing at the things that it causes them to do. So we're not laughing at the disease, we're laughing at the things that it causes them to do. Because you can laugh about it, or you can cry about it, you can get mad about it, but why not laugh about it, right? Because sometimes it's just plain funny. It's just plain funny. 
Okay, so one such instance with my mother, and what brought Cindy to telling me this was Justin throwing the green bean. She said sometimes her son has these bursts, and it causes him to do things like this. So, <laughs> my mother, back in the day, when she smoked, she <laughs> She's driving down the road. She usually kept a cigarette just hanging out of her mouth. She didn't smoke it as much as she just kept it hanging out of her mouth. She'd have an ash that long hanging off of it. And I'd be like, how do you do that? But anyway, but she was driving and she was holding it while she was driving. Well, she had one of those burst and her hand come up like that. Well, the lit cigarette went up and across and back on the ceiling of the car. You know how it's got that kind of feltish stuff? Let me just go ahead and tell you that stuff burns real easy. I mean, it didn't like catch on fire, but it left, it left a mark. It sure did. It just whoosh, back like that. One time, again, holding the cigarette out of her mouth like that. And my dad was a police officer, right? My dad doesn't know this, and I don't think he ever watches my videos all the way through. So, if he does, he'll learn this today. But he had uniforms. I had uniforms. Those uniforms were horrific because they're straight-up polyester. Do you know how fast polyester burns? Really, really fast. So, Mom used to put his shirts in the dryer and kind of let them tumble a little to dry and get the wrinkles out and then she would hang them up and she would keep the creases in them and every now and then she'd have to iron the patches and stuff but you got to be careful with an iron too because an iron will go straight through a polyester shirt if you're not careful ask me how i know <laughs> i i'm gonna need more shirts sir why you need more shirts tracy well you see um I was trying to iron the crease back in the sleeve and the iron was too hot. Anyway, my mom holds the shirt up like this, like you do, and she did the flop thing, like you do, and then she was gonna hang it where well, she had one of them burst and it kind of came back at her. <laughs> Oh, I can't laugh this hard when I got a cold. It kind of came flying back at her, and her, <laughs> her cigarette hit that <laughs> polyester sh uniform shirt. <laughs> it burned a big old hole in it. <laughs> he, he touched it and went, whoosh. It was huge. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, I had to gather my composure. She did what any good wife would do. She took a, one of them seam rippers and she ripped the patches off because you can't just throw away a uniform shirt. And she hid those patches and then she rolled that shirt up and she threw it away. My dad, I don't know. My, I, I guess it's OCD. If he laid this remote like this and he came in and it was like that, he would know. Somebody touched my remote. I have seven shirts. One of my shirts is missing. I would be like, I thought I had four. Do I only have three now? What happened to my shirt? I don't keep up with stuff like that. My dad does. He, <laughs> okay, so he's always had a mustache and he's very methodical in what he does. He goes in the bathroom. I mean, he does his shower, whatever. He takes his comb and he goes this side. And then he puts the comb in that hand and does this side. And then he takes it across the back. And then he smooths it down like that. His hair all goes back like that. Because he's got very wavy hair. And that's about the only thing that they ever could do with it besides shave it down. So he just combs it all back like that. He's got very nice hair. I mean, even still at 88, he's got a decent head full of hair. Anyway. He had a little mustache comb, and he had a little mustache scissors that he could keep them little hairs trimmed perfectly, right? Because uniform, you can't have your, couldn't, they do whatever now, but you couldn't, your mustache hair could not go below the top of your lip. So he would take those scissors 
and keep that mustache just perfectly groomed right above his lip, okay? And he would lay his comb in his little medicine cabinet with his scissors in a certain way. If I went in there and I wanted to use those scissors for something, which I can't even think of now, probably knowing me to cut a tag out of its shirt because I can't stand when the tag is getting me in the back of the neck. I'd take those scissors and I'd cut that out and then I'd try to lay them back where I got them from. Mm -mm. Nope. I mean, I would mentally take a picture of exactly how those scissors were laying and try to put it back so he would not know. It's like that movie where the towel was moved, you know, the kitchen towel. I forgot the name of it. Cape Fear? No. Fear. Fear. Fear something. I don't know, anyway. I mean, he's not mean like that, but you know what I'm saying. He would come home from work and be like, who touched my scissors? And we would all be like, why were we afraid to say I did? I don't know, because he never got onto us. I mean, like, he never got mad at us and beat us or anything like that, but he was just telling us that he knew that we had touched his stuff. Yeah, he was an only child. I always wonder if that's part of how he does all that, you know? I think it made him a good detective, though, because he pays attention to very small details. He told me the other day they finished his, they had to remove a little skin cancer from his head, and he said they finished it 1038, and that he had to wear the bandage for 24 hours. So at 1038 on Wednesday, or Thursday, he could remove the bandage and take a shower. Y'all better believe it was 10. 38 when he removed that bandage. Yep, he's very precise in that kind of thing. The mail ran yesterday at 4.44. Mm -hmm. Not five minutes ago, not 4.45 to round up, which is what I would do. 4.44. Yep. None of us kids turned out that way as far as numbers and knowing where stuff is. We're all just scatterbrained and can't find anything. We're all just like our mother in that aspect. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just, I'm like, where's my remote? I'm the only one that lives here. Where, I mean, I, I thought I always put it right here. It'll be like in the bedroom or something, you know? It don't even make any sense. <sighs> anyway, I took a video last night using my new flashlight that Joan got me out in the backyard, so I'm gonna include that so y'all can see how good it is, because it's awesome. So, anyway, that's it for now. I'll be back. Okay, this is my backyard. Oh, that's a red curtain. I was like, what is that red up there? Anyway, I'm gonna show you the new flashlight that Joan got me. Y'all ready? Bam! And there's my girl. Look at that. It shines up that tree. Is that not amazing? Isn't that something? Okay, and then it has another button. I don't know what that is. It's not quite as bright, but I didn't see any paperwork. I'm gonna have to look and see what that one's for. And then this one is if you see coyotes, because allegedly they do not like flashing lights. And it's the triple, I don't know, I can't see. Triple light, I think's what it's called. And she got it on QVC. There's my baby girl. She's been asleep all evening. Look at that moon. She has been asleep all evening while I've been sitting and doing nothing. Now, this morning when I was trying to work, she followed me around. She's been on her bed asleep. You ready to go back in? All right, now we're out for our walk and I'm gonna end this one here. I'm gonna do a video number two, but it's gonna be about scammers, so Stay tuned for that one, but I wanna keep it serious. We can't have no silliness on this. No, I cannot be silly. I've got to be serious at all times because it's a very serious issue. So stay tuned for video number two and make sure you hit that like button. Did you already hit it? Okay, I'm showing you the colors. We've got a little bit of color, some. Look at that one, even though it's gonna be in the low 30s by Wednesday, but whatever. Anyway, I love you. Jesus loves you. I hope he's coming back. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just ate some bacon. <laughs>
I hope he's coming back soon because people be crazy. And stay tuned. Video number two is heading your way later on today. Okay, bye.